The Advanced Cryogenic Evolve Stage is a new, larger upper stage that would fly on the Vulcan rocket. ACES has a combination of attributes. One is it's a much bigger stage. It has three times the propellant capacity of the Centaur, about four times the thrust of the Centaur. So it's a much larger stage. It's a much more optimal stage for, for the upcoming Vulcan booster. ACES has a number of elements uh, to it that are, are really key technologies. One of those, and really the most important, is the Integrated Vehicle Fluids Propulsion Subsystem. This is a essentially an APU, an auxiliary power unit, uh, that burns hydrogen and oxygen out of the tanks. It makes electricity, and that actually gets rid of all our main vehicle batteries. Uh, it also uh, autogenously pressurizes the tanks, and that eliminates what we've historically used, which is helium. The third thing it does is has, it offers an attitude control system capability. So what it does is it has small thrusters that basically do the attitude control. The second key technology is next generation avionics. In next generation avionics, we're going after extra modularity in the system and significantly lower recurring costs. Uh, the next key feature are the engines. We have set some aggressive cost objectives to get our engines for the ACEs less expensive than today. Some of those engine options include uh, an RL-10 derivative from Aerojet Rocketdyne, an X-Core option, and a Blue Origin option drive from the BE-3. So we are heading toward a competitive engine downselect environment where we actually are trading various options to be the, the ACEs engine option. So ACEs fundamentally has three key features to it. One is it's a much higher performing stage. With Vulcan ACEs, the combination and the maximum number of solids on the Vulcan, we will have on the order at least 20% more payload performance than the current Delta IV Heavy. Also, that big increase in performance could be a value to customers uh, to actually have more maximum performance. The next key feature of the stage is really inexpensive. So we're targeting uh, the ACES stage to be the same or less cost than today's Centaur, which is a much physically smaller stage. We're looking at some new ways of doing welding and joining and inspection of the welds and, and such that we think we can uh, get considerable cost out of the, the structure manufacturer. And then the last one is mission flexibility. Uh, ACES, with using its IVF subsystem, essentially has uh, constraints on duration largely removed. Our current mission durations are hours today. We can we could go to days, uh, and with growth options even into weeks and, and months uh, on orbit. And so we can do much longer missions with more burns. We can provide a significant amount of electrical power to payloads with the same propellant load because we have this long, long duration and, and low boil off as well. So the design philosophy of ACES is really trying to take advantage of the best of Atlas and the best of Delta. We're trying to take advantage of the best of each. So the structure of the ACES uses a construction method very similar to the Centaur, which has a really exceptional mass fraction to it. Uh, Delta, for example, uses aft avionics versus forward avionics that simplifies operations, means you don't have to have a clean room for, for processing, for example. And so we're trying to amalgamate the best parts of each of our uh, heritages uh, together in the ACES stage. Our planning right now is for ACES to be fielded in 2023. When ACES comes along, it's really a game changer in terms of a big increase in performance and really some very significant cost savings that, that come along with that as well. Vulcan ACES is being designed to support a wide range of users. Traditional communication, military type users, but also all of the emerging needs of space that are going to benefit humanity back here on Earth. With uh, ACES development, we are, are truly building a platform that we can extend to do almost anything we can dream up. Existing high energy upper stages are limited to hours of on-orbit capability. ACES will give us the opportunity to go beyond what we can do today. Things like multi-day orbits, expandable up to even a month on orbit. Very easily with modifications, we can go from low Earth orbits to high Earth orbits to geos and to even beyond with only a few modifications. Some of those enabling technologies include IVF or integrated vehicle fluids. IVF allows us to generate electricity which powers our avionics which allows us to get rid of batteries. It is a reaction control system which allows us to get rid of hydrazine and helium which really expand our duration on orbit because we're only consuming our two main fuels. And then we have the ability to add MLI or multi-layer insulation that really reduces the boil off of our propellants. It's thin layers of reflective material that are incredible insulators in the vacuum of space. So being able to store cryogens for days and weeks 
will be able to do that with ACES. Because we can refuel ACES, it opens up a large window of opportunity for us to do things that we currently can't do today. Things like being able to go to the moon, sit there for a while, and then being able to bring large amounts of material back, which will enable lunar manufacturing, cislunar manufacturing, and even mining on the moon. And while currently ULA does have the ability to restart our upper stages, ACES takes that to a whole new level. We'll be able to restart multiple times, um, 10 or more times, which will allow us to use it much like a space tug. We won't have to rebuild stages to bring things back. We can reuse the same stage over and over again, saving us a lot of time, energy, and money. There are many customers that have performance needs in excess of what even Vulcan ACES can provide. The way that we are moving forward to support that is by combining the performance of a couple launches. What distributed lift really provides is the ability to take substantially more payload. For example, to GSO, it's about two and a half times the payload capability of a single launch. The first launch would just take propellant to orbit, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. The second launch would take ACES and, for example, a Bigelow Habitat, rendezvous with that propellant. We would transfer the propellant into ACES and then go and perform the mission with as many burns and the duration that's needed to go support that mission. So the way we determined what kind of capabilities we should build into ACES, we looked at industry and said, where does industry really want to go in the next 10, 20, or even 30 years? And we are trying to respond to a perceived market demand in the future. And it is kind of a challenge to look forward that far and try to say, well, what will we need? when that time comes around and try to build a system that we can implement it easily today. Zeus is a mission kit that we add to the basic ACES vehicle to enable us to deliver payloads directly to the lunar surface. What we do is we add electric pumps that are powered by the integrated vehicle fluids and that feeds liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen into auxiliary thrusters that allow us to soft land these payloads on the lunar surface. Looking a little bit further out, being able to extract the water and minerals from the lunar surface, utilizing Zeus to get those materials up to orbit, can transform the benefits that space offer back to humanity. So ACES is an amazing technology and I'm really proud to be working on this program and excited that ULA is pursuing this technology and I can't wait until we launch ACES in the early 2020s.